The setting is in Persia, and our key characters are Mordecai, a godly Jewish man, and his niece, Esther, that he raised. And amazingly, Esther became queen of Persia. But at that time, they did not, the people of Persia did not know that she was Jewish, and Mordecai asked her to keep that little bit of information quiet. Also at that time, there was Haman, who was an evil man, and he was determined to get rid of the Jewish people. And he talked the king of Persia into uh, declaring a decree that all the Jewish people should be killed. Well, this was bad news for Esther, of course, and Mordecai. So Mordecai came to Esther, and he told her that she needed to go to the king. And uh, <clears throat> she was dismayed because no one could come to the king unless they had been asked by the king or they could risk death. And so uh, she, she was in a dilemma, to say the least. And uh, so we will begin with chapter 4, verse 12. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to royal position for such a time as this. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai, Go, gather together all the Jews who are in, who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. And I guess if you want to know the end of that story, you better read Esther this afternoon. <laughs> and we'll go to 1 Samuel. And we're going to be reading in chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. And this portion is um, entitled, Samuel Anoints David. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul? Since I have rejected him as king over Israel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? Saul will hear about it and kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, do you come in peace? Samuel replied, yes. In peace I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Then Jesse had Shema pass by, and Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all of your sons? They're still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he is tending the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. 
We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in. He was ready with a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. He is the one. Then the Lord said, Excuse me. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. And Samuel went to Ramah. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's always a blessing to hear the word of the Lord read in a public place. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we ask your presence in this place. May your spirit fall upon each one of us, even as it fell upon David that day. In your mighty name, Amen. And so the title of my spirit, or the sermon is, Spirit, Fall on Me. So a man rummages through the junkyard, looking for whatever catches his eye. A painter stands in front of an easel, trying to capture his imagination. A writer sits down to write and rises up with a piece of art. And so what does the junkyard treasure hunter, the painter, and the writer all have in common? They all seemingly create something out of nothing. The junkyard treasure hunter welds a few pieces of junk together and presto, he has a sculpture. The painter meticulously strokes his brush on the canvas before him and out of nothing emerges a beautiful impression. The writer writes in there emerges a novel, a bestseller. Once each one of us were a piece of junk, an empty canvas, an old piece of white paper. We were nothing more than a piece of pixie dust floating around in a universe too big for any of us to comprehend. And then one day, God picks us up out of the junkyard and makes something out of us. The Lord saw something deep within us, small as we are, and as he said of the beginning, he says of us now, it is good. For us, he painted the skies. For us, he made the trees and the grass. And with his finger, he carved out the Grand Canyon and so much more. Within his painting, within his world, he wants us to live. And as to Adam, he gave Eve to be a helper so our mighty God wrote a personal love letter to each one of us to be our helper. And that is the Holy Bible, our scripture. You know, I've often marveled at a sculptor who begins with just a plain old rock and he chips away at it. And after a while, there emerges a lion. And I often wonder, how did that sculptor no, there was a lion in that rock. God does the same thing with all of us. Like with me. How did he know that I was to be a pastor? I was just part of the junkyard of humanity. And out of so many others, why did he choose me? Think about your own godly gift. Why did God choose you to minister to His people with the gift that He gave to you? Ultimately, I think it boils down to what God said of David when He told Samuel to anoint David as the next king of Israel. Hear the word of the Lord from Samuel. The Lord does not look at things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance of but the Lord looks at the heart. <clears throat> so in this church, if it's okay to ask, how is it with your walk with the Lord? If that's okay to ask, then surely it's okay to ask, how is it with your heart? 
Uh, you can fool me with what you say and do on the outside, but sure as the world, you're not going to fool God with what's going on on the inside. The Lord measures you not by how you look, but He measures you by your heart. Little shepherd boy, strong enough to kill a lion and a bear, brave enough to bring down the giant Goliath, Small as he was, as unlikely as he might be, he is the one that God selected, that God blessed to be the king of Israel. We know that Samuel the prophet anointed David to be king. And then you know what happened next? Hear this. And with all of your heart, covet, ask God for what David received. What did David receive? The Bible tells us in verse 13. From that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. And you know what? That same Spirit power that came upon David is available to any one of us. God raised up a little shepherd boy to be the king of Israel in his time. And God can and He will raise up any one of us to accomplish the purpose for which we were created, the purpose for which He has sent us. And if we fail to accept our mission in life, then as Mordecai said to Queen Esther in Esther 4.14, For if you remain silent in this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to this royal position for such a time as this. Come on, people. Don't settle for being a piece of junk, a work of art that never came to be, a manuscript never written. Ask God, ask God, Grant to you that same spirit power that he gave to David. Raise yourself up. Pull up your big boy, your big girl pants, and become a piece of art, a beautiful painting, an inspiration to those who God sent you to minister to. Don't be shy. Listen to what our Yahweh God said to Joshua. Have I not commanded you be strong, be courageous, do not be terrified, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will go with you wherever you go. Oh, but I hear your thoughts. I have no godly gift to share. You know what? I didn't either, but here I am. I'm living proof that God doesn't call the equipped, he equips the call. That's from the book of Alan, first, first chapter. <laughs> and then he says this about the gifts of the Spirit in Corinthians 12. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them and all men. You know, God has called us together as a fellowship of believers, as if we were our one body with many different parts, many different gifts. And then 1 Corinthians 12 goes on to describe those lists of gifts that God gives to us. There's wisdom and knowledge, there's faith, the gift of healing gift of miraculous power, prophecy, the ability to distinguish between spirits, the gift of speaking in tongues, and to some, even the gift of understanding that language. God bestowed upon David a gift, the gift of kingship over Israel. And David did not shrink away, but with the power of the spirit that God gave him, he plunged ahead doing the work that the Lord that the Lord had laid out before him. He had no training to be a king, but he did it. I had no training to speak of to be a pastor, but here I am. What gift of God are you shrinking away from? 
Are you afraid of mistakes? Oh, we all know that David made mistakes. We know that. And I've made plenty of ministry mistakes as well. Which one of us have not messed up, made a mistake in our lives? When it comes to serving the Lord, will He not see us through even our failures? Come on. Dare. I dare you to be a rose for Christ among the thistles of the world. Great will be your reward when one of the lost on earth greets you in heaven and says to you, thank you. Thank you. I'm reminded of that famous song sung by Ray Bolts, and it's just entitled, Thank You. And here are some of the lyrics. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I was a life that was saved. You know, my heart swells with joy when I think of maybe my witness led someone to salvation. And I'm so proud of any one of you, and I've seen it happen before, when you witness and someone is led to Christ because of your witness. And besides feeling good, all of us, for those efforts, will be given a crown, a crown in heaven. Crowns to cast down at the feet of Jesus as we worship Him before the throne. But here's the point I want to make. You may feel like a piece of unwanted junk, a painting yet to be painted, a manuscript yet to be written, but God has a plan for you. All of us are here on earth for one purpose, and this is our common purpose, and that is to bring God glory. Do you need encouragement to bring God glory? Well, then listen to this from Daniel 12. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. I know that you can write someplace and pay a bit of money and they will name the star after you. Just forget that nonsense. Listen to God and be a star in His heavenly kingdom. Now I need to tell you about using your gifts for God and for His glory. I already told you that I've made plenty of ministry mistakes and so will you. There will be tests of patience, obstacles that you would never have imagined. And yes, some of your friends will even abandon you. But let me encourage you by pointing you back to David. Samuel anointed David to be king, but it didn't happen instantaneously. David first served in Saul's court as a harp player. And his second challenge was to face a giant named Goliath. Because David killed the giant. He was an instant hero in all of Israel. And this made King Saul very, very jealous. In fact, Saul even tried to kill David in the palace. And after that, that David was on the run for a couple of years, always being hunted by Saul. And it finally came to pass that King Saul died. And finally David, though anointed to be king long time before, finally rose to occupy the throne. And what's the point of me telling you this story? Sometimes, not always, but sometimes you must wait upon the Lord for His perfect timing for you, for your ministry. But you better be ready. Because when God opens that door, though you may thank you, think you are ready, this is the question that will arise. Are you willing? Queen Esther knew that going before the current king without invitation required that she be put to death. And she proved herself not only to be ready, she proved herself to be willing. We hear her resolve. And if I perish, 
I perish. How many of us would be willing to put our lives at risk as Esther did? Not with God's favor. The king spared her life. Not only that, the king granted her her request. So you see, these two people, chosen by God, King David and Queen Esther, both were willing to be used by God, our Creator, even if they experienced personal sacrifice. Both just plain, ordinary people, like any one of us, and God used them in a mighty, mighty way. So too, God can use any one of you in His kingdom work here on earth. Oh, you might be able, but are you willing? When I think of the King of Kings stepping out of eternity into time so that we might step out of time into eternity, my heart pounds with emotion, with love. And the more that I think about what the Lord has done for you, for me, not only does my heart beat with love, my eyes often overflow with tears. And in my alone moments with Jesus, though I may have once been a piece of junk, rotting and rusting away in the junkyard of life, though I once was a painting never even thought of, a manuscript never ever written, Jesus, my Lord, picked me up and He made something out of me. And when He's done for me, He'll do for you as well. Before I close, I want to go back. Go back to our scripture reading for today. And we'll read again from verse 13 of 1 Samuel 16. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the presence of his brother, Brothers, now listen to this part. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. The Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Serious. Have you ever prayed to God and just asked that His Spirit be upon you? Jesus says this in Matthew 7. He says it to you. Says it to you today. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. To him who knocks, the door will be opened. Don't be afraid. Don't neglect asking God for His Spirit, His favor to fall upon you. Open your hands as if receiving. Open your heart as if believing in God will enter in. That's His promise to you. Hear, hear how much the Lord wants the Holy Spirit to abide in you. From Luke 11, hear this promise. These are not just words in the Bible. These are spirit words with life. Hear the word of the Lord. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Would any of us do that? No, certainly not. Or if he asks for an egg, give him a scorpion. And if you then, though you are evil, that's us, we're evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? That's the same Spirit of the Lord that fell upon David. And it's yours for the asking. In James 4, verse 2, it says, Ye have not because ye ask not. So may the favor of God's Holy Spirit fall upon you today. And when it does, you will be a pristine sculpture, a beautiful painting. A Pulitzer Prize novel. Don't ever underestimate the power of what God can do in your life. And when He calls you, simply respond. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Send me.